you are more and greater and better than the grass, than the birds of the air, than the young lions, because God is on your side. We come to these experiences, and this is the time we are tested. This is the time we come through, and we come through powerfully. Yes, good morning. This is Bishop Dichana George. I've been waiting for you so that we can share on word power today. I'm so excited that you are following us. And this is great. We are making big impact in our lives, our families, our communities, and our nations. Let's look at uh, some of the divine examples of how the Lord supplies to the needs of his people. In the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse number 18 and 19, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, sacrifice, and acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Divine supply. Are there examples in the Bible where we can validate and say, yes, God supplied? There is an example of where God supplies in the wilderness to the people of Israel. Elijah, at the time of famine, he was supplied supernaturally by God. The woman of Sarfeth, in very difficult times, she found divine supplies. Elijah, in the wilderness, also experienced divine provision. The army of the three kings, we read them in 2 Kings chapter 3, they were supplied by God. The prophet's widow, who had debts to pay, the Lord supplied to our needs. The Samaritans, in the time of famine, they experienced divine provision. We also discover the multitudes that followed Jesus, they were provided for by God supernaturally. There was a couple that was in a wedding reception and their wine ran dry. The Lord came in for them. What are we learning, dear children of God? Our God supplies our needs. Dear children of God, our God supplies our needs. May I speak to you candidly this morning and this day that God is still in the service of providing for his children. I don't know what kind of needs you have today. I want you to believe that as I share and I speak on this word, with this anointed word, the Lord is going to meet your basic needs. It may be clothes, it may be shelter, it may be food. It may be some need you have been praying for for a long time. The Lord is coming in for you. Take this, accept this, value this, and the Lord will do his marvelous things in your life. Yes, never, never, never give up. The people of God, the children of Israel, in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse number 7, the Bible says, the Lord your God has blessed you in all the works of your hands. He knows you by walking through this great wilderness. This 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. During this season, according to Deuteronomy 2 and 7, it's like we are in a wilderness. 
We are in a wilderness because of the circumstances surrounding us. It could be COVID-19. It could be some of those job losses we have had. The economy has shrunk. Do you know that God never leaves his people? We come to these experiences, and this is the time we are tested. This is the time we come through, and we come through powerfully. Pastor, never give up. My dear mother, my dear brother, the young person, many of you that are crying out, and you are saying, oh, I wish God came on, on to me, and he assisted me to sail through during this difficult time. The Lord will never forsake you nor leave you. I just want you to find encouragement. God will never forsake his own. Maybe you wanted to complete your house. May I encourage you, that house is going to be built. Maybe you were planning for a wedding. And you did not have the money. It has been very, very difficult. I want to tell you, your wedding will come through. Some of you do not have the fees to pay because everything is like it got lost. It's like, I don't know how I go back to college in this semester. I don't know where I'll find the fees for my children to complete their secondary education or their primary education. Oh yes, I have got lots of loans and I took a lot of money. And these loans are getting compounded. I'm here to tell you, the Lord God who provided for Israel in the wilderness will take you through this difficult wilderness. Elijah was fed by the ravens. When you read in 1 Kings 17, this great man of God walked in the power and in the authority of scripture. He knew that God was his provider. I find a lot of encouragement when I look at these giants of God that walked with God in their day. When you look at First Kings number 17, then you come to verse number 11. As she was going to fetch, he called and said, bring me I pray a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I don't have a cake and a handful of meal in a barrel and a little bit of oil in a cruise is what I have. I'm gathering these two sticks that I may go dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. What did the man of Elijah what did the man of God, Elijah, say to her? Elijah said to her, I'm reading 1 Kings 17, 13. Elijah said to her, fear not. Go and do as he has said, but make me thereof a little cake first. Bring it unto me, and after that, make for yourself and for your son. Are you able to hear the voice of God? Go and make bread. Go and make that chapati for me, which is a, a kind of a bread we make here in Kenya. In other places, it's called chapata. Go and make. And she had just a morsel of bread, flour, and there was some little bit of oil in a cruise. She had come to the very end. May I say, when you have come to the very end, that is when God comes in. That is when miracles begin to take place. And the God of Elijah, who answers by fire, will feed you in your dry season. And uh, that says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal, of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Do you know that Israel had gone through Three and a half years, there was no food. It was salt drought. There was no water. The animals were not having grass. But here is a man of God carrying the prophetic word.
And she went and she did according to the saying of Elijah. She and he and her house, they did it many, many days. I want to prophesy. You will eat many, many days. Yes, you will enjoy the abundant divine provisions of God. Do not allow doubts to enter into you. Obey the word of God. You will eat you and your house. You will eat you and your people. And the barrel of meal did not waste. First Kings 17, 16. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to Elijah. There is the spoken word. Today I speak on the spoken word. You who is looking for land to build your church. The Lord has spoken. The land the resources are available. You who is seeking to complete your building facility, the Lord says he will provide. You who is looking for your school fees, I hear the spoken word saying your fees has been taken care of by God. The money that has not been in the church the Lord says is bringing it back. Yes, that dead business will be resurrected. I prophesy the spoken word of the Lord. The barrel of meal will not waste, neither will your cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he has spoken by his prophet. Israel again and again was delivered by the prophet. Prophets lead the people out of their wildernesses, out of their famines. Prophets will speak, and the things which are dead will come back to life. Prophets will speak, and the closed doors will open. When prophets begin to speak, they change the situations. They are the game changers. And it came to pass, after these things, that the son of the woman of the mistress, God sick, and they brought this son, and Elijah was used of God to bring that son back to life. I do not know what you are going through. The son of the prophet, of, of this widow, was brought back to life because the woman of Sarapeth understood what it means to listen to the prophetic word. May I ask you, do you ever listen to the prophetic words that are spoken by men and women of God? I do write texts. I do even send audio messages to people. People follow me on SoundCloud. And I've seen people write back of how God has met them and how he has provided miraculously. I'm not mincing my words. Some of you are not sensitive enough. The messages you hear, it is not just for you to comment and say, wonderful. It's not just to say, fantastic. Take these words, apply them. Your life will change. Elijah, in the wilderness, he experienced the provisions of God. I'm looking at 1 Kings 19, verse number 6. He looked and behold, there was a cake baked in coals and a cruise of water on his, at his head. He did eat and drink and he lay down. The Lord will provide when things are very scarce. You know, Elijah had been terrorized and frightened by this wicked woman, Jezebel, a type of satanic power which will come on your way and challenge you. And he ran away and he said, I'm going to die. He ran and he ran and he ran for his life. 
he came to a place called Besheba, which belongs to Judah, and he left his servants there. I'm reading verse number four. He himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came and he sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested himself that he might die. And he said, it's not enough now. Oh, Lord, take away my life, for I'm not even better than my fathers. We come to situations, maybe because of COVID-19, or maybe because of infections like HIV and AIDS. We come to situations where we do not know what to do next. And we just decide to say, I'm going to run into the wilderness. I have known of pastors who have abandoned their calling. Men and women that have tried to close their businesses. Students have abandoned the university. And they are in their wilderness. They have run away. They have separated themselves. They have isolated themselves. Do not die. I know you buried your husband. You are a widow. I know you are an orphan. Your parents are gone. I know your business wound up. I know the church forsook you and you are just there on your own. You don't know what to do. And you are saying what this great man of God was saying. Can you imagine even men of God get terrorized? Do not allow Jezebel to control your life. Do not give up. Somebody has given up on your marriage, your business, your career. Somebody has given up on ministry. Do not give up. And as he lay and he slept under a juniper tree, behold, an angel of the Lord touched him and said, Arise and eat. Do you hear this angelic voice coming to you? Arise and eat. Pastor, Bishop, man of God, dear student, father, mother, son, business woman, business man, arise and eat. There is an angel who has been sent to you. There is divine provision. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It doesn't matter where you have been. An angel has been sent to you. And the message is simple. Arise and eat. Arise and eat. Arise and eat. That is your rhema word for today. Arise and eat. Arise and eat. Verse number six. And lo, he looked, behold, there was a cake baked on coals. And a cruise of water at his head. He did eat and drink. He lay down again. Now, <laughs> the angel came to him the second time. He touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. Take this revelation. Take this message. The journey is long. You are a teenager. You have got to live to be 100. Take the cake. Take the water. Touched by an angel. Touched by an angel. Touched by an angel. And he arose and he did eat and drink. He went to the strength of that meat for 40 days and the 40 nights into Horeb, the mountain of God. You have an appointment at Mount Horeb. Take your cake. Take your bread. Do you realize he was touched twice by an angel? Touched by an angel. Touched by an angel. Touched by an angel. When God touches you, you will go 40 days and 40 nights through the wilderness you will carry a revelation that will never, never let you down. 
If you are listening to me and you are a teenager, I promise you the best of your days are ahead of you. Take the cake baked by an angel. Take the water which will quench your thirst. If you are a young adult, take the bread. Go, go 40 days and 40 nights. Go to where you are having an appointment with God. It is not over until God says it's over. Divine provisions. Divine provisions. Stop. Don't make a mistake to get married to the wrong man, to the wrong girl. Don't get into that profession without hearing with your mind and your heart and your spirit. Because the journey is long. Jezebel has sterilized you. Jezebel of disease. Jezebel of poverty. Lack and wants. Jezebel that has been following you. She has tormented your thinking. Arise and eat. Do not sit under your juniper tree to die. It is not over until God says it is over. I refuse the spirit of Jezebel. I refuse the voices of COVID-19. I refuse the voice of lack and want, poverty. I refuse the voice of disease. The angel of the Lord has been sent to me. I'm speaking to you. I could be God's voice to you. Arise and eat. Take that baked cake. Take the revelation I'm sharing. Take the water. Jesus is the water of life. He quenches your thirst. He gives you the best of that which you need in life. I just pray that somebody will be crazy enough and they say no more struggles, no more suffering, no more pain. My prayer is, if you have listened to me today, your story has changed. Yes, your story has changed. Why? God is the one who gives divine supplies. If he took care of Israel, those 40 years in the wilderness, he'll take care of you. If he fed Elijah in the season of famine, he'll feed you. If he provided for that widow who had the last of the flour and the oil, he'll take care of your need. If Elijah was alone in the wilderness, he took supernatural provision, carried him 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God. Yes, I'm going to the mountain of God. You are going to the mountain of God. Never, never, never give up. May the Lord meet you like he met Elijah. We pray, Father, we thank you for your divine provisions in difficult times. I'm praying that today my listeners will be awakened into this revelation. Disease, we overcome you. Famine, we overcome you. Lack and want, we overcome you. Difficult times, we overcome you. Because we are looking to God who provides divinely. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. That's a powerful revelation. Those are great insights. This is not just another preaching. You have heard the Rima word. Arise and eat. Arise and eat. Arise and eat. Share this message with others. You can find me on SoundCloud. That's where Bishop Gichana will be found with a lot of his sermons. Just go to the App Store, find SoundCloud. 
log in and listen. Take these revelations that God has given me. In the last 50 years, I've walked with him. May I ask you to consider putting an offering on the pay bill 989870. Do it. See the difference. 989870. Just take your phone, release that offering, and the Lord will bless you. Until we meet again, this is Bishop Gichana saying, Arise and eat. It's goodbye from us. Have you heard? Bishop George Gichana's latest sermons are now on SoundCloud. You can now listen to his sermons as you go on with your daily activities. All you have to do is download the SoundCloud app, search for Bishop George Gichana, and listen to his refreshing, life-changing sermons. Now, I have already downloaded the app. Have you? This day, as you enter and you begin to engage in your daily activities, you need the Word. 